the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us together to study your word. We thank you for our history. Help us to practice everything that we study. We believe that we are coming closer to you every day through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless God. So, praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, yesterday we had finished a little bit early. So, uh, somebody was texting me saying, uh, you know, we wanted to listen more. Praise God. So, we will take some more time today. We'll study some more. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, it is. Is, is that okay? Yes? Yeah. yeah very much. <laughs> yes. Praise God. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, yesterday we were seeing, what are we seeing yesterday? What are we studying? Yes, you all can unmute and speak. You know, I have given that, so. How okay. angels minister to us. Yes, yeah, correct. How angels minister to us. Yes, then. Okay, let me ask you some questions. Why can we see trouble in our life? Why? We saw the scripture. Yeah, there's a hand. Is. Yes, Sarah. Okay. We can see trouble in our life. It is because we saw yesterday the words that we speak is why we can see trouble in our life. That's why we saw in um, Proverbs 21, 23, those who keep their tongue and they keep their mouth, they keep their soul from troubles. Means when I'm speaking that, what will I be able to see in my life? I will be able to see trouble in my life. Praise God. Yeah, so thank you, Jesus. So we, uh, you know, uh, what we'll study today because uh, this is a very, very important truth. That is uh, how a law works. The law in the word of God, how does it work? Because uh, according, you know, to, to me, what happened to me was I spent most of my time, okay, when I, in the beginning, uh, I had spent like uh, listening to these teachings because uh, this is the basic truth. When we understand um, this, we can understand everything else from the Bible. So, let me ask you some questions, okay, questions. How many of you believe that God will give you success? Raise your hand. Nobody believes that God will give you success. One person, okay. Okay, how many of you believe that your future is in God's hand? Press God. Okay, now, let's go to Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Press card. Okay, I'll put this. Enoch is not there, yeah. Yeah, I'll put the scripture. Okay. Press card. I thought Enoch was there and I was waiting for him. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I did not realize. Yeah. Yeah, Joshua, chapter 1. Verse 8. Okay. See this. This book of the law. What is the law? How many of you remember? What is the law? Law is a universal principle. When anyone involves in it, the result will always be the same. Yes. Now, yes, a law is an established universal principle. When anyone involves in it, the result is always the same. Now, if I throw an object, okay, if you throw in India an object, where it will go? Down. It will go down, right? Yes. But you know, here in UK, when you throw an object, it does not come down, it stays up only. How many of you believe that? No. No. Press card. But you're not in UK. How do you... Why don't you believe? Because there is law of gravity. 
Yes. Law because, of gravity is universal. Yeah. Yeah. Because there is a law, a law of gravity. So you are trying to say, I, I will believe the law, but I will not believe what you are saying, what I'm saying. You're saying, I will believe what the law says, but I will not believe what you're saying, what I'm saying. So, uh, a law is an established universal principle, means it, it, you know, it is universal, means anywhere it is on the, on the earth, wherever I am, this law works for everybody. You might be in a different part of the world, I might be in a different part of the world, but when, you know, when you get involved in this law, the result is always the same. Yes. Now, if you know, if somebody is going to jump from the tenth floor, can God stop the law of gravity? No. Why? No. no. Why? Because it is a law. Will you know? For one person, will God stop the law? What about the rest of the people? Yes. Yeah. Now, a law is an established universal principle when anyone. It can be you, it can be me. When anyone involves in it, the result is the same. Now, it does not look as, you know, you're tall, I'm short, or, you know, if, it, if you're short, you're tall, you're fair. Any part of the world, it does not make any differences. It will work for everybody. But always remember, it can work for anybody. But if I misunderstand the law, Okay, for God cannot stop the law. God cannot change the law for my error. That's why I asked you, if somebody is going to jump from the 10th floor, can God stop the law of gravity? No. no. Because of that one person's error, that one person's mistake, God cannot change the law. Yes, God. Did you understand? Yes. So, yes. Uh, yes. And, and that's why wherever I can be, you know, in any part of the world, the result is always the same. It does not look on the differences. It does not differentiate between you and me, but it will look at us, uh, you know, it will work for anybody. The result will always be the same. Yes. Now, the Bible is a book full of laws. In another way, the Bible is a book full of principles. When I study the principles and when I involve in the law and when I apply the principles, the result will always be the same. Now, when you see in the Bible, if there is any man or you know any person that has got a healing or that is set free from certain bondage, it is because that person has understood the law and applied the law and got the result. Okay, and in the same way, if I understand the same law, and if I apply the same law, I will get the same result. Yes, now this scripture is saying, this book of the law, the Bible is a book full of laws, a Bible is a book full of principles. God has already given us the law, God has already given us the principles. Yes, yesterday we were seeing a law from the Bible that was the law of, you know, life and death. Yes, I can either speak life or I can either speak death. And there are, you know, we have studied, okay, Sister Justin has taught us how about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the law of sin and death. And all these laws, if you come under it or if I come under it, it will not um, look at us as different. Even though you are in a different country, I'm in a different country, I'm in a different part of the globe, okay? But the, the result, the, you know, the end product will always be the same. Yes? And, 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 the, and it is not different with the Bible. Even if it's the same with the Bible. Okay, if I'm going to apply the law in the Bible, if I'm going to apply it, I will see the result. If you apply it, you will be able to see the same result. That's why when you see Jesus, Jesus went everywhere teaching in parables. What was he teaching? He was revealing them the secrets, the, the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And always remember, these principles, these laws 
are revealed to us because we have the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is the Holy Spirit that is revealing us all these laws and principles. Yeah, anybody is saying anything? Okay, that's God. Yeah. Yes, so we'll see this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Okay, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now, we'll see this first part of it. It's saying this book of the law, the Bible, shall not depart out of thy mouth. Means the word, the word of God is saying, the Bible is saying, I have to take the pages and put it in my mouth, right? No. Who said that? Nina. Yeah. Why no? Because it is saying it is spiritual. Okay. Okay. So what does that mean then? Inocuate. What does it mean? What do you mean by let it not depart from your mouth? Anybody knows? Could you repeat the question? Okay, you know, put the scripture. Joshua 1 8. See the scripture, okay? Yeah. Okay, see this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So I'm asking you. Does the scripture mean means you know depart out of my mouth means I have to take the pages from the Bible and put it in my mouth, right? No. So no. what does that mean? Means it what it means by let it not depart out of my mouth. I'm supposed to speak it day and night. I'm supposed to confess the word of God. I'm supposed to speak the word of God day and night. Day and night. And that's what yesterday we were saying. When I'm going to speak the word of God, those words are not just words, but those words have power. And that's why the scripture is saying, let the word of God not depart out of thy mouth, but you shall speak it day and night. Yes? Yeah. Okay. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You know, to, to study this word meditate, in other words, meditate means study. Meditate means study. Now, do we read the Bible or do we study the Bible? Study. 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 Do you study? study? Do you study? Yes. Okay. So, you know, many times people will say, I read the Bible every day. Have you studied the Bible? Do you study the Bible every day? Yes? Yeah. If you're studying the Bible, then I'll ask you one question. If You know, many times people will say, I read the Bible every day. If you ask them, what did you read? You know, what did you read? They will be all confused and they will say, uh, I read somewhere in Acts, but I don't remember. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Why? Because they only read it, they did not study. When I'm studying, I can recall. When I study, I can recall. Example, if there is a person, okay, a student, who's going for examination, tests, okay, even you, will you read it or will you study it? Study it. Study it. If you read it, then when you're sitting in the, you know, you must have read it, just the night before the exam. When you read it and you go and sit the exam the next morning, you'll be wondering, uh, you'll be thinking, uh, I remember, but not exactly. Yes? yes. yes. Why? Yes. Because you only read it. So many times people say we read the Bible, I read the Bible, but they can't recall because when I'm going to study, only that's when I can recall. If I'm going to read it, then now, I will not be able to recall. Recall means to remember. When I am going to when I'm going to study, 
Now I can remember. And that's why a student will always study for the exam so that now in the exam hall, that person can recall whatever he has studied. In the same way, even today, when trials and when tribulations come, I am supposed, you know, that's why I'm supposed to study the word. Now when temptation comes, I know the word to fight back. And that's why the best, best example is, see Jesus. Okay. Jesus was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. What was he doing? He was studying the word. He was having a fellowship with the father. Yes. And because he was studying the word, now when the devil came with thoughts, he was not confused. He said, you know, he was so bold. He said, it is written. Why? Because he had went through a time of studying. Now, in the, in the midst of trials and temptation, he could recall. And that's why even today, I have to go through a time of preparation where I'm studying the word now. When uh, trials come, when temptation comes, I am able to recall. Scott, why, why do you have tests and examination? To see how much knowledge you have gained, right? Yes. 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 And I, learned so far. yes. And if if you remember and you recall and you pass the test, means now you are able to understand the things which are higher. Yes. And that's why that's when you will be promoted. In the same way, today, when I'm going to study the word, now there will be temptation. And this temptation. When I, when I speak the word of God and I pass the test, now I'm going for the next level. And that's what you mean by meditate therein day and night. What do you mean by the word day and night? It does not mean that you will, you will sit down in one place and you will study. No. You have to do other things. Does that mean you will not go to school? You will only sit down and study? No. It is I know when, you know, we have to study means we have to spend time. And, you know, while I'm doing anything, okay, I'm concentrating on the word. My example, when I'm in school, my concentration is on the word. I'm doing my studies. It's not that I'm not doing. I'm doing my studies. I'm studying. Every day I have to study. But while I'm doing my studying, I'm hearing the, you know, I'm hearing the word of God. And in the same way, wherever I am in the school, I will be confessing the word of God. And that's the same for you also. Wherever you are, you might be either confessing the word of God or speaking, or you might be even hearing the word of God, hearing the teachings. Praise God. It's more, you know, and that's why our focus, our concentration should be on the word. I'm not saying you should not do other things you have to do. But your focus should be on the word of God. Because meditating is not Sitting in one place. Worry is meditation, right? When your mother is cooking in the kitchen, when she is worried, she will turn the gas off. She will come. She will sit down. She will worry, 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 worry. Once she finishes worrying, she will go back to the kitchen, turn the gas on, and start cooking again. Right? No. No. What, what will she do? She will continue doing her work with the thought in her mind. Yes. While she is doing that work, her concentration is focused on something else. Her thinking is focused on something else. She is doing something, but her thinking is on something else. In the same way, I might be doing something, but my focus has to be on the word of God. Maybe there might be I'm doing some physical activity, but then my focus, my concentration is completely on the word. And that's why the scripture is saying, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Means study the word of God day and night. Focus on the word of God day and night. 
and say this that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then you shall make your way prosperous now here we see the scripture is saying observe to do according to all that is written therein for then you shall make your way prosperous now this is saying three things here you should speak the word of god meditate on it and apply it when you do these three things god will not make your way prosperous it is you who will make your way prosperous and you will have good success it is nothing of my own effort it is everything i only have to put my effort to study the word i don't have to work hard i should only speak the word meditate on it and do according to all that is written in it then i will make my way prosperous and then i will have good success now there were one or two of you that said my future is in god's hand yes god will give me success but here the scripture says you shall make your way prosperous so the scripture never says it will be god who will make your way prosperous it is you who will make your way prosperous and it is you who will have good success it is not that god will make your way prosperous it is when you are speaking the word of god and you are meditating on the word of god and you are applying the word of god that's when you will be prosperous and you will be successful thank you jesus but it is a daily process where every day i am spending time and i'm speaking the word and i'm meditating the word and i'm applying the word these are the three keys that god is giving us to be prosperous how many of you want to be prosperous this god all of you this and what is the three keys for prosperity it is speak the word of god meditate on it and apply it and trials will surely come temptation will surely come but then god has given me his word i have to speak that word meditate that word and apply that word now that's when i will pass the test i will show you the scripture put james chapter 1 verse 2 press god and you know that's why the scripture says okay uh, you know the scripture says that two men build their house one man built his house on the rock and one man built his house on the sand and the storm came to both the house means even today trials and tribulations will come to us but then yeah see the scripture my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation now does this scripture say count it all joy if you fall into diverse temptation when when yeah. yes so either if i am going to build my house on the rock called the word of god or am i going to build it on the sand means on the things of this world okay trials will surely come when means what does when mean if means they might come or they might not come when means they will surely come so this means god is giving us a guarantee that there will 100% be trials and there will be tribulations this god means 100% there will be surely trials and there will be tribulations this god are you understanding not your head yes yes okay now see the next verse press god um yeah okay knowing this 
that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Means, you know, how does joy come? Joy comes by knowing. That's why the scripture says, knowing this. So, you know, that's why when you say we have, when you say we have joy, joy comes by knowing. When I know the promise of God, when I understand what God has said in his word, that is what gives me joy. It is the word of God that gives me joy. It is the scripture that gives me joy. Hallelujah. Did you understand? Praise God. And that's why when you see, uh, we, we, saw, we saw this. Joy is, what is joy? What is joy? Joy is knowing the end result in the beginning. Yes. Joy is knowing the end result yeah. in the beginning. That's why joy comes by knowing. That's why the scripture says knowing this. When I know the end result. And how can I know the end result? It is through the promise of God which God has given me. That's how I know the end result. And because I know the end result, that's why I can have joy. Press God. Okay, we'll see a little bit more about this joy. I have a question. What? Yeah. Why, why would you be joyful if you fall into temptation? Press God. Okay. Now, when a mother, okay, is, you know, has a baby, Okay, is pregnant. Now, when you say the mother, will the mother say, this, this is too much pain, I cannot bear? Will she say that? I don't want the baby? Please no, no. No. But through the pain, she is ready to, you know, to suffer because she knows. What does she know? She knows the end result that I will have a beautiful child. Yes? Yes. That means she has joy. Why does she have joy? Even though she is having the suffering, she has the joy because she knows the end result. So why we have joy in the trials and tribulations is because we have the scripture. I can see that if there is a person with a sickness, the person can see that he has the sickness, but he can see the word of God. The word of God is saying by the stripes and the wounds of Jesus, I am healed. Now, he knows the end result. The end result is the healing. Even though he can see himself at the present moment that he is sick, he is focused on the end result. How does he know the end result? Through the promise of God. So, you know, we will be in trials and tribulations. The promise of God is guaranteeing us that we will experience trials. But, but, God has given us his word. When I have his word, now I can have joy because I know the end result and I am no longer going to be governed by what is around me, but on the end result. Okay, example. When you see Jesus, the Bible says Jesus, the Bible says Jesus embraced the cross with joy. You know why? Even though he was going through that suffering at present moment, even though he was going to that insult where the, the people were teasing him, spitting on him, abusing him. But even though he was going to that suffering, he never said, you know, he never showed his power. Did he call the angels and say, I'll show you my power? Did he do that? No. No, no, no. No. Why did he have so much joy in that suffering? Because he knew the end result. That you and I, we will be saved. Yes. And because he knew that you and I will be saved, that's why, you know, he had joy. Did you understand? Yes. And that's why, uh, you know, the, the question you had asked, how can we have, you know, why do we have joy in the trials and tribulations? Because physically I can see, and there is a physical evidence which is contradicting to the word of God. 
but i am saying the word of god is more more powerful than my present situation did you get your answer noah yeah yeah thanks yeah no problem praise god yeah okay thank you jesus so let's go to mark chapter 4 was 14 now we have been studying law and principle now let's see one law in the bible okay the principle in the bible yeah 14 see this the sower sows the word this card the sower sows the word what does that mean What do you mean by the sower sows the word? Who is the sower? God. Yeah. The word is the seed, right? A sower will sow the word. Seed. Yeah, the seed. Yes. And the seed is the word of God. So now press card. So now we see here it's saying the sower sows the word means it is us who sow the word. we are the sower and we have to sow the word of god in our heart mm. yeah let's go did you understand yes. yes 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 yeah now uh this is a very very important law and a very important um principle in the bible okay put uh, the 26 verse Twenty six, you know. Okay. And he said, "So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground." I mean, Jesus is saying the kingdom of God works on a principle. The principle is sowing and reaping. okay we will study more on sowing and reaping that is the basic foundation because the whole kingdom of god works on this principle and jesus said in the same chapter but in the 13th verse okay he said if you want to understand any other parable in the bible you have to understand this one parable this is such a important um parable as such an important principle in the bible okay press card but what is this related to related to joy is because when a farmer sows the seed does he have joy yes yes, yes. how does he have joy knowing the harvest is going to get yes he can he see the seed growing no when he planted no no but no. does he know the end result yes yes if he has planted yeah. apple seed he knows the end result yes apple yes. Yes. yes the harvest will be what apple apple yeah and that gives him the joy because he knows the end result that's why you know he is watering he can't see anything happening See the twenty seventh verse of the same chapter, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knows not how, so he can see the seed that is growing. He can see the seed germinating, but he still knows he still has joy because he knows uh, the end result. That is, it will be a wonderful tree or a plant. Yes, that's the same way. when i plant the seed called the word of god in my heart now i know the end result so i am no longer worried but i am in complete joy and that's what james chapter 1 was to is saying my brother in count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation he's saying when you are in trials and tribulations have joy because you know the end result yes yes praise god yeah now yes thank you jesus praise you jesus 
Okay, let's go to Hosea. Chapter 4 or 6. Now you might be thinking we are, we are studying the same thing again. It's because this is the most important thing. We need to understand this to understand anything else in the Bible. Okay. My people. Okay. Are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge. Now we will not learn the whole scripture. We will learn up till there. You know, now, there is a destruction in this world. Okay. There is a destruction in this world. And what destruction? Why are, why are we facing this destruction? Because of the lack of knowledge. In other words, because of the lack of the understanding of the word of God. Because of the lack of understanding of the word of God, that is why we experience you know, destruction. There is a destruction in this world. People are experiencing destruction. Why? Because of the lack of knowledge. Because of the lack of understanding. But that can also be turned around. I can experience, you know, I can experience success for the lack of knowledge. Because, I, because of the lack of knowledge of this world, I'm not bothered about what the world is saying. The world will be telling me so many things. You're not good at this subject. You're not good at that. You're like this. You're like that. You're so dark. You're so short. You're this. You're that. The world can be telling me so many things. But I am destroyed. I'm experiencing success because I'm not going to ponder on what the world is saying. I am going to ponder on what the word of God is saying. The word of God gives me the assurance, gives me the confidence, okay? And it gives me, you know, it gives me, you know, success. And that's what we saw in Joshua 1, 8. Why can we experience success and prosperity? Because we are studying the word, meditating the word, and pondering the word. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Did you understand? Nod your head. Yes. 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 Praise God. Yes. And, you know, and that's why we're studying this because the more we study, the more it will be sunk in deep in my heart. You know, deep in our hearts. I tell you, I have spent like five, six months just studying the same thing. Just studying this, you know, the, the topic about law. You know, why is why such a long time? Because this is the basic foundation. Right in the beginning, I've spent, uh, you know, four to five months, most of the time as to hear these teachings. Praise God. And that's why now we are teaching the same thing to you because this is the most important basic, uh, basic truth of the kingdom of God. Yes? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when you see the scripture, okay, why can't, you know, many times we can't see, you know, we, we, we want to see success in our life, but we can't see the success in our life. You know, example. A farmer is, you know, you know, he's manuring this, you know, he's manuring, he's watering, he's doing everything, perfect sunlight. But on the day of harvest, he does not receive any harvest. Why? Because it is a week and not the time to... Okay. okay, okay, enough wait. Okay. Now, the farmer is watering, there is enough sunlight, he's manuring, He's doing everything perfectly. Okay. But on the day of harvest, he does not receive any harvest. Enough, don't answer. Okay, wait. Why can't he see any harvest? He didn't pour enough water. Everything is perfect. But on the day of harvest, he never got he harvest. He didn't put the seed. Yes. This farmer, he never planted the seed. 
he did everything else but one part he missed to plant the seed how can a farmer expect for a harvest without planting the seed we are like that we don't want to plant the seed of the word of god we don't want to meditate the word we don't want to speak the word we don't want to apply the word but we want to be prosperous and successful example was joseph just like that prosperous and successful god gave him the dream and after 3 hours he was the governor of egypt right no 3 hours no. no, not 3 hours okay the the next day he was the governor no, of egypt no no not next day also it took him a lot of time lot of years. time 13 years 13 yeah years. it took lot of time why he was studying he was meditating and he was applying that promise that dream which god has given him today god is not giving us dreams and visions because god has given us the written word that time joseph or the old people the old testament people they did not have the word like how you and i have it and that's why god had to speak to them through visions and through dreams and when you see joseph in within one day not even one month he was made a governor of egypt it took a lot of time and in this time because uh, be- before pl- when i plant the seed and reap the harvest in that there is a time gap okay when i plant the seed in my heart before i see the harvest in the physical there is a, a big process a time gap and in this time gap i am supposed to count it all joy i have to be you know i have to be meditating on the word means i'm watering the word meditating you know applying the word speaking the word confessing the word now in that time gap that's when i will see the harvest that is the prosperity and success and the same happened with joseph until he was studying that word and pondering and meditating on what god had given him the dream only after a period of time only then he became the governor many times we want this i'll give an example abraham when you see he was praying okay he was closing his eyes and he was praying and when he opened his eyes there was a baby in his hand right no No. no 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 after one no. year no. more than one year oh one year yes he was yeah. there okay uh, you know it was not that when god was praying and then automatically there was a ready made child in his arms no okay he he, he was he even god had given him a vision and he was also pondering on the vision same today okay Be, you know when, why you know we it is not a one day process have you ever heard of instant noodles yes 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. you don't have to yeah. do any work right everything is ready yeah. just put the water and eat yes 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 that is what we want hot water yeah hot water and you can eat if we that's what we want we will speak you know we will not speak the word we will only make one prayer very next moment we want instant results yes but is that possible yeah no, no. there is a no. time no. where i'm supposed to study the word of god yeah there's a hand raised yes that's uh, me um uh, an iceland so i have one question so uh, planting the seed you said is yeah. planting the seed same as meditating on the word studying the word confessing the word is that same as that yes 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 when i'm speaking the word day and night i'm planting the seed you know why because the scripture says okay can you put that psalms chapter 45 was one you know because previously we were saying why can't we see success in our life because we didn't plant the seed but water was there you said enough water was there enough sunlight was there uh so this uh, water and sunlight and everything is outside or we have to provide is there any difference between these two processes that's okay, what i want okay you know what we what we do 
we are there for you know what i'm trying to say we are there for every retreat they're listening we are there for every session listening uh, you know we are already there maybe even you might be preaching to others okay everything you're doing but you have not planted the seed in your own area yeah wow. put that in you know, Psalms chapter 45 was one we do a lot of things but the main part we don't do okay we do rest means, everything yeah. else we do everything rest inside. yeah we go okay, we not are, inside our heart yeah see this, see this okay to the chief musician upon shushanim for the sons of kora must tell a song of love my heart is indicting a good matter i speak of the things which i have made touching the king okay and see this main part my tongue is the pen of a ready writer now we have studied this but we'll see again what the scripture is saying is because my tongue my tongue is a pen which writes in their heart means when i'm continuously speaking the word of god again and again and again now that's when the word of god is written in my heart okay and and you know when you say it is written in your heart means that is called the planting of the seed when i'm speaking the word of god again and again and again continuously i'm speaking only the word nothing else only the word and many times we speak the word we plant the seed but then the very next moment we uproot the seed you know how uh example there's a person speaking the word of god by the stripes and the wounds of jesus i'm healed by the stripes and the wounds of jesus i'm healed and he gets a call and you know it was his friend he, who who called him and he picks up the call and the friend asks how are you oh i have such, i have this sickness now what happened he spoke the the word of god he planted the seed but the very next moment when he said i have this this, this sickness he has uprooted the seed so to plant the seed it is by speaking the word of god to uproot the seed when i'm speaking any word that is contradicting to the word of god i have uprooted that seed but it can also be in another way i can plant the seed that is contradicting to the word of god means from this world i can plant the seed of fear worry anxiety i can plant okay and when i plant the seed now uh, you know when i plant the seed in my heart i can uproot it only when i'm going to speak the word of god when i'm continuously speaking and speaking the word of god now the the seeds which are contradicting to the word of god are rooted yes that's why the uh, you know the scripture says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer means when i'm continuously speaking the word of god day and night that word is you know planted in my heart did you understand aunty Did you understand, Miss Lina? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I was wrong. Yes, I yeah. was muted here. Sorry. Yeah, press card. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we were saying this. Uh, of CR four six. Okay, and I and as I had said, okay, we do everything else. Okay, the farmer waters, manures, everything else, but he does not plant the seed. Then how will he expect for a harvest? yes and that's why we are destroyed there is a destruction because of the lack of knowledge that's what god cannot change the law for my error because i made an error god cannot change the law we saw right yes so if i'm yes. going to yes okay when i'm going to speak you know that's why uh, we saw that you know there is a law okay and this is a law planting the seed is a law in the bible press card yes did you understand yes okay let's go to matthew press card any more questions mr nanti or anybody else no okay. just to confirm just to confirm what you said one thing so once we uproot by contradicting the word of god and by speaking the word of god you see, you plant again so why we speak again word of god and remove the bad words right that's what you said 
Yeah, now, okay, example. If your friend came and spoke something wrong to you, now the seeds are planted in your heart, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I can speak the word of God and uproot that seed and plant a new seed which is in a line with the word of God. Yes. Yes, yes. yeah. Yes. yeah. Thank you. Yes. No problem. Praise God. We're studying. We're all learning. You and I'm learning. I have a question also. So if that is the case, no, when we, uh, so does it mean that we have been meditating, but then at some point of a trial, we spoke something negative. So does it yes. mean that uh, the seeds that we had planted have been uprooted? Yes. Okay. Now, if you're going to come here one hour and study the word and speak life, and then rest, uh, rest 23 hours, you're going to speak that. Now, have you, haven't you uprooted the seed? No, that is, yeah. But I'm saying, you know, sometimes um, even when we are spending a lot of effort and studying the word, if, if we, you know, are human weakness and we speak something negative, contradicting. Yeah, one word, yes. Uh, so then what happens? We can, ca I, I was thinking that, you know, you can just cancel it in the name of Jesus and it goes. So that is that is that uh, true or is it that you know everything is uprooted? Okay, no, no, no. When you plant the seed, now when you speak anything, you have quickly to renew the mind. Okay, if you don't renew the mind and you think and you start pondering on what you know the things that are contradicting to the word of God, hundred percent the seed is uprooted already. Okay, that is if it if it has become a stronghold for you because you kept building building on that uh, negative thought or a negative word. Yes, yes, yeah. But sometimes you know, just out of impulse, you may say something negative, and which you which you know it's wrong, and which you immediately realize. Yes. Then you have to renew your mind. When you renew your mind, now you know the seed is still not uprooted because you are still you quickly change your mind. You did not agree to that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Let's go. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's go. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter four. Not Mark. Matthew. Matthew chapter four. Matthew chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Twenty six and twenty seven. Okay, press card. Matthew 4. Okay, it's okay. Press God. Okay, we... Okay, it's only up to 25. I think it's Mark. I think it's Mark. I think it's Mark. Yeah, Mark. Sorry, by mistake. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll read this again. And he said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knows not how now example okay imagine yourself not having electricity for one week what one week one day imagine yes imagine Okay, if you know if you can't you can't live without electricity, right? No, you need electricity. Yes, but can the same electricity kill a person if the person does not understand yes. how it works? Yes. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. So if I have the right understanding of the law, the law can work for my benefit. But if I have the wrong understanding of the law, it can even uh, you know work against me, can't it? It can. If I don't understand. Yeah. And that's why I said, okay, now here yeah, this law is we plant the seed and we reap, you know, in the time gap, 
after the time gap we repeat reap the harvest but in a bad way you know i can plant the seed that is contradicting to the word of god and i can get a wrong harvest also if i misunderstand so uh, any law if i understand it it will work for my benefit if i misunderstand now it can even work against me and it can even destroy me press card did you understand yes now yes. you know and that's why god has created us okay with the freedom of choice how am i going to involve in this law god has not created us as robots go left go right no god has created us in a freedom of choice that we have the freedom to choose and that's what we were studying the other day we have the freedom of choice we saw in deuteronomy 30 was 19 it says you know god has given us the choice to choose life death blessing and cursing so i could either choose what is in the kingdom of god or i can choose what is in the kingdom of darkness please understand that god is not forcing us god you know i always have this question i always had this i got answered now i had the question if god is a loving god okay and god knows everything in the beginning then if he would know that adam would and eve would eat the fruit and they would be in sin why did he put the tree there if he knew all that and if he was the loving god that was the question i had in the beginning you know and when i came to understand this i came i got the answer it's because god loved man so much he wanted man to give to give man the freedom of choice so that they can choose what you know they can choose either they want to be connected to god or they want to have the knowledge of good and evil god did not yeah. want to force them but god wanted them to choose and it is the same today god has given us the same freedom of choice did you understand yes 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 yeah yes you know you can take this to down press card yeah okay thank you jesus hallelujah press card yeah it's late there in india now press card yeah <laughs> all right yeah. thank you um alistair okay the uh, praise god and you know for me it was a needed word of god that's the reason i asked for the doubt something came up in the day time so i wanted to ask you that thank you so much for answering alistair anybody has any question thank you thank you jesus thank you jesus yes uh, anybody has any question no i think you know i think we can wind up then so anthony yeah oh i shouldn't ah you can unmute all right we'll pray let's go all yeah. right in the name of father son and the holy spirit amen thank you jesus for letting us learn your word and know you more every day thank you for giving us your love and help us share the same love with others bless alistair and all his intentions in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. thank you alistair see you on next friday Yes. I'll I'll be there tomorrow. I will be oh, there. Ah, okay. Good. See you tomorrow. And uh, Nisha, you were saying something? No, no, nothing. No. You're teaching tomorrow as well, Alistair, or you're just attending? I'll be there. I'll be there for the whole week. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It is Sister Dosin will be there today tomorrow teaching. Okay. Got okay. It. You'll be there. Okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye god bless you all god loves you love you bye bye, bye. 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 bye.